Uh, now I want to introduce, though, somebody who's been involved in the political arena for quite some time, a friend of mine. I'm very happy to have her with us today. Her name is Monica Douglas, and she is the executive director of the Republican Committee of Allegheny County. Thank you, Monica, for being here. Oh, thank you very much. Are you happy to be our first guest on the South Gen Ball Pittsburgh? I'm, I'm very excited. Very good. Well, we're glad to have you here, Monica. Um, I think your story of how you got involved in politics is definitely an interesting one. If you wouldn't mind sharing with our viewers, how did you decide to get involved in politics? Well, my interest in politics actually dates back to when I was a very small child. My grandmother was very active in politics in the Democratic Party, and I remember going to parades uh, with her and waving the flag and passing out candy to, to folks. And I think initially that's the, my, my draw uh, mm -hmm. into politics was my grandmother. Um, so it's something that is um, very interesting to me, and I ran for student government when I was in high school, when I was in middle school, when I was in college. So it's something that's been a, a passion of mine for a very long time. Um, I first ran for office um, outside of college in 2002. Mm -hmm. I ran for state representative and unfortunately I lost. Um, a year later I decided to still stay involved mm -hmm. and I ran for my local borough council and I've won. Uh, I ran for re-election for my borough council in 2007 and I was victorious. And then just last year I ran for um, state representative again and I, I was defeated. Um, but, you know, so I have two wins and two yeah. losses under my belt. <laughs> yeah, 50% isn't bad in it's politics. It's not a bad, no, it's yeah. not a bad there's, record. There's a lot of stories of people that run, I mean, former Governor Casey, Senator Specter, they run many times and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but it, I generally think it's all about just putting yourself out there, being willing to serve and that way you can, you know, no regrets, at least you try. I have absolutely no regrets and in fact, I think you learn more when you lose as opposed to when you win, truly. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, we'll touch on, what are some of the things that, that you've, uh, uh, learned from your defeats? Um, I've learned that um, even when you lose that people are still willing to come to you for advice and counsel. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting because even since I, I lost the, the state house race, a lot of folks in the, the district I was running in would call me up and ask me to get involved in particular issues in their area because they saw that I was very interested and passionate um, about politics and, and local governance. So it's, it's been interesting because people were still reaching out to me to mm -hmm. despite the fact that I lost. Right. Also just learn from the incredible um, energy and enthusiasm of people along the, uh, the campaign trail. Um, I think I learned a little bit from each and every person that I met along the way. That's great. And now you're uh, now the executive director of the county party, which you know is quite a you know a good climb that you've made within the party. Um, now you worked outside of politics at first, right? I did. I worked for a community-based nonprofit on the North Side mm -hmm. called the North Side Leadership Conference, and that's where I sort of got my start in activism um, in um, the real grassroots way. I think you look at it. That organization and other organizations out there sort of go by the Solowinsky type of, of grassroots politics, and, and it was a great learning experience for me. And then I, I worked in conjunction with a, a local hospital here. Um, so I was involved in nonprofit before I actually went out there and worked in the world of politics. And now you're the executive director. A lot of people watching are probably saying, that's great, it sounds like a great title. What does an executive director do, if you wouldn't mind sharing with our viewers? It does sound like a great title, doesn't it? <laughs> we have another uh, <laughs> executive director coming up later, too. <laughs> it does. Um, but uh, I manage about 800 volunteers throughout Allegheny County, um, and I have one other staff member and several interns. And basically, on any given day, I will do everything from answer the phone to filing to making copies. Um, so it's not that as glamorous as it sounds as far as executive <laughs> director, um, but also in recruiting the volunteers and recruiting staff members and, and interns, I basically would not give my volunteers something that a task that I would be unwilling to do, whether it's going out and canvassing for local candidates or knocking on doors or making phone calls. That's something that I daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my first job, I was the director of a daycare, actually, out in Lancaster County, and I remember my father-in-law saying to me that you're never too good to take out the trash, and that's the kind of message that sounds like you're sharing as well with our audience. That Absolutely. No matter what your role is, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to help your organization move forward. That's great. And that's something that I, I think was instilled in me in a very young age, and that's something that I've carried uh, through in my career right now. That's great. Now, we have a, in Allegheny County, there's a very well-known Allegheny County Republican chairman, Jim Roddy, uh, who is your supervisor yes. and your boss. Jim's as, my boss. Yeah. How's your experience? I, probably a lot of our viewers maybe have seen him uh, maybe in his commercials on TV or, uh, you know, roasting somebody at an event. What's it like to work with Jim Roddy? Jim is absolutely wonderful to work for. Mm -hmm. He, what you see 
is what you get with Jim. He is known as a practical jokester. He loves <laughs> to tell jokes, um, but he is great to, to work around. I, I think if you look at his background um, and see how successful he is, um, it's, he's truly been a great mentor for me. That's great. Now, Mr. Roddy, obviously, is somebody back when he got elected to county executive in 1999, had to pull in a lot of Democratic support to win the county. It's a, you know, a majority Democratic county. Um, you as well and Elizabeth um, are in a bit of a minority there. Um, I believe you're one of the few Republicans on council. I am the only elected Republican on council. And what's your role on council? I'm the president of council. Now, how in the world, our viewers are probably saying, how in the world does a group of Democrats elect a Republican to be the, the president of council? How'd that happen? I, I think when you get down to the local level that the party affiliation and the R or D behind your name doesn't amount to much because when you're talking about local politics and potholes and stop signs and things mm -hmm. like that, there's not a Republican pothole or a Democratic pothole. Um, and I think just through my, my sheer um, persistence and showing that I'm willing to work for the community, I think that my colleagues on council saw that I was in it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. When I was first elected, believe it or not, for the first six months, I was referred to as a little Republican girl. <laughs> and I don't think that I could even have mustered a second to approve the minutes. But just after showing my, my, my council that I was there for the right reasons, I think they did come around. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly enough, I was able um, to convert one of my fellow council members to switch to the Republican Party. Um, and we are running a full slate of candidates, so we're going to have a, uh -huh. we're going to have a, a good time this fall. That the fact that we're, we're going to have some healthy competition, which I think is great uh, throughout the whole entire region. Yeah, when I, I, I was in Lancaster for six years, and that was a highly Republican, and still is a highly Republican area. Uh, but just by running candidates, they were able to switch the whole city council and to be Republican, and they were able to flip it just by running good candidates that cared and wanted to make a difference. So maybe you'll do the same in Elizabeth. I guess we'll see. That, that's what I'm hoping, <laughs> and and I. I you, know, you look at my council now, the, the makeup of my council has changed just in the last six years since I've been on council. When I was first elected, I was the youngest one on council by about 45 years. Um, and now uh, the council uh, just recently with the, the last election cycle in 2007, um, we have a 23-year-old on council now. So right. it's great that we have some new energy enthusiasm. Yeah, that's, it's great to hear always when young people get elected yes. to office. Um, that's definitely a purpose behind the show is just to get people thinking about how they can get more engaged and more involved. Um, for people that might be watching the show and they say, you know, I'd like to be a county committee man, I'd like to be a county committee woman, uh, for either party, how do they do that? Well, I think they, they would reach out to their, their respective party, um, and I know I, I can speak for the Republican Party, and I'm sure you know the Democrat Party is also looking for volunteers as well to be the folks on the ground. Um, to be a local committee person, you're really the, the the Republican or the Democratic Party because you're the first contact that people might have with that that party. So it's just a matter of um, contacting your local um, party organization and asking them if, to be involved. Um, I could tell you that we don't turn away any volunteers who come through our <laughs> right. doors. So uh, what have been some of the highlights of Monica Douglas's political life? So, I, when, you, when I came here in 2003, you were one of the first people I met. Everyone told me you were a rock star, which has turned out to be very true. Um, what have been some of the highlights of your political life? Uh, I think having the opportunity to work on some fascinating campaigns, to meet some incredible people. Um, I did have the opportunity to, to meet um, President Bush and Vice President Cheney, um, Governor Palin, um, just meeting some incredible people along the way. But I think the highlight is just the interaction that I have on a day-to-day -day basis with just the, the regular ordinary folks, so to speak, the average ordinary Jane and Joe. And that's been probably the, the most a rewarding experience for me. Great. And then just two quick questions that, to close us out. What's the future of the Republican Party in Allegheny County? And what's the future of Monica Douglas? The, the future of the Republican Party, I think, is very promising. Um, our, our numbers, our committee numbers are growing by leaps and bounds. We're seeing a lot of enthusiasm and energy out there, which is, which is great to see. Um, the future of Monica Douglas, uh, <laughs> I, I think that that story hasn't been written yet. Um, and We'll see what, what the future holds. Right now, you know, serving as president of council keeps me very, very busy. <laughs> sure. And uh, I'm anxious just to, to serve out the remainder of my term of two years. And we'll see where the story goes from there. All right. Sounds good. Well, I want to thank you for coming in, Monica, thank for you being very our much. first guest on the second show. Um, up, up next, we'll have Aaron Malchaney, who is the executive director. Again, we want to thank Monica for being here. And we'll be back in just a short moment. Thank you. Again, my name is Tom Baker. Please get out there and get involved today, Pittsburgh, and, and make a difference for our city. Thanks a lot.